I did my graduate work here at Brown, and I think the graduate experience at Brown was really uh, important for me. Uh, I was trained as a geologist, looking at the history of the earth in terms of the sediments uh, that exist on the earth in the Appalachian Mountains, and one of my professors, uh, Tim Much, uh, inspired us to think outside the box, and he said, you know, we should really talk about um, how we can apply remote sensing techniques to other planetary bodies. We thought he was crazy. I mean, this is 1968, 67, 68. We thought he was nuts. You know, other planets? What are you talking about? And so we humored him, and three of us took the course, and we learned a huge amount about how to think beyond the horizon, think outside the box, and really step out into, um, basically, uh, you know, off the cliff into deep space, so to speak. Two of those three people went on to careers in planetary science. It's just amazing. I was emboldened to, uh, you know, take a chance. And uh, so I looked at the college placement annual, which is at that time a book of, of jobs, and looked up geology, and there was page 15 to 22, geology, and then 67, geology. I said, what's on page 67? Why would there be an outlier like that? And it turned out, opened it to page 67, there's a picture of the moon, and it said simply, our job is to think our way to the moon and back. And I thought, oh my God, how do you do that? A little phone number in the bottom called that. It was NASA. Uh, they invited me down for an interview. I got the job. It's a little known fact, but many people who were associated with the Apollo program, in fact, were educated at Brown. Uh, the uh, NASA administrator at the time of the Apollo 11 landing was a Brown graduate. One of the key people who uh, was a um, uh, the chief engineer at the Johnson Space Center was a, was a Brown graduate. And a whole series of people were Brown graduates who were involved in the Apollo program. And the thing is that um, this kind of exploration endeavor really has carried on since that time. From the new curriculum's beginning, professors were encouraged to teach courses they had a passion for. Imagine that, passionate teaching. Combine that with the fact that students took courses not because they had to, but because they wanted to. What a concept, okay? The whole thing became not a seller's market, but a buyer's market. The student was in charge. I am passionate about this because I love what I'm doing. The students take the course, why? Because they want to take the course, and it's just amazing. I mean, it's just such a different dynamic than I see from my colleagues in other institutions uh, around the country where they're going, oh God, I drew the short straw, I have to teach introductory geology. And we end up with uh, office hours, which are just a treat because the people who have real questions and are highly motivated, uh, you know, come in to talk, and there are many of them. And so I think it leads to, um, uh, you know, just a really great learning and, and teaching environment. So the class is actually 150 students, and when I ask them, anybody who can't get home for Thanksgiving, if they'd like to come over for dinner, it's a calculated risk. My wife, Ann, and I discuss it, uh, and we take a chance, but typically, um, you know, we get a handful of people, and one year we had uh, uh, four Kenyans uh, over, and it was just the most incredible thing we've ever had. Uh, this year we have a, uh, a three or four Filipino, uh, someone from Africa, uh, another student who couldn't get home, and, and you know, it, it's just an amazing thing. I mean, we learn from them, they learn from us, and it's just a great environment. I tell my students that science is very, very simple. It's simply the exploration of the unknown. It's just what we don't know, and many of them think, oh my God, how am I ever going to contribute to something that has so much information? Many years ago, I was sitting in my office uh, with a British colleague, and one of my students came in, she was looking for a topic for her master's thesis, and she said, I, I, I don't think I'm going to think of anything uh, new. And <laughs> my colleague Lionel just turned to her and said, oh, don't worry, almost everything is not yet known. And he's totally right. But the attitude is not, you know, you have to learn everything that's known. It's what's unknown and how do we understand it. So I think that's a really important part of the teaching and research aspect at Brown. It's more about ideas and exploration than it is about facts and process. So my uh, Earth, Moon, and Mars class is a non-prerequisite class, so it has everything from senior physics majors to freshman clueless, what do I want to do people in it, and that's wonderful, okay. Uh, so I, you know, I don't know all the pathways of these people once they leave the course, uh, but I did, um, in fact, go to a meeting at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory uh, of um, uh, NASA, and 
sat in on a meeting of the Voyager project, which was going to the outer solar system, and I looked and up and uh, one of my GO5 students uh, was chairing the meeting. And I thought, my God, I haven't seen him since many, several years ago in class. And uh, I went up to him afterwards and he said, I was a senior physics major. I was so interested in, in planetary science and inspired by the things we talked about that I went off to grad school in planetary science and got a job at JPL. So, so that's pretty amazing. I was co-chairing um, the um, uh, Provost Search Committee some, some years ago, and so uh, at the end of the meeting, we had breakfast meetings of the committee at the faculty club, and at the end of the meeting, everybody kind of left, and I'm looking around at the, the kind of bagel and, and goodies spread they had there, and, and I'm thinking, you know, the grad students, and undergrads would really love to, you know, so I asked the person there, can I just take this and take it over to... Um, uh, Lincoln Field Building and, 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 you know, put it out for the students. Oh, no, we have to throw it away. And, I, you know, I said, throw it away? Yeah, we have, it's health law. We have to do that. I was appalled. So she left. It was winter. I had this big overcoat on. And so I just took a whole bunch of bagels and stuffed them in the coat and then took off back to um, school. I just couldn't stand to see the waste, my parents having grown up in the Depression, et cetera. And so I got halfway across campus, and I ran into the president, Bartan Gregorian. And he said, Jim, come, come talk to me and tell me about how the Provo search is going. So I walked over, clutching <clears throat> my chest with all these uh, bagels in it, and um, went over to just outside his office. The provost came out, the current How's it going? So we started talking about the search committee activities. And I must have made a point somewhere, but a bagel rolled out and rolled down, rolled across my boot and across the floor and banged off the far wall. And both of them watched it go the whole way. Gregorian looked at me, looked at the provost, and said, you know, we're just going to have to start paying our faculty more. <laughs> so, so, yes, what can you do?